Hello there, welcome back, and welcome to part 41 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I will be doing something a wee bit different. Um, you'll remember when I was building the lounge uh, reading and writing room and smoking room that I was sort of lamenting the fact that these rooms didn't extend up above the boat deck like they did on the original ship. Um, and the reason for that is that the plastic um, of the Trumpeter kit, uh, for some reason it stops at the ceiling of a deck so these rooms don't extend as high as they should and this sort of gives you the impression that the rooms are quite a lot smaller than they actually were um, so today i'm going to try to rectify that for the first set of rooms which is the uh, reading and writing room and the lounge um, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to cut out the plastic ceiling um, and use the boat deck piece to actually act as the ceiling for these rooms there's a couple of advantages for this. Um, the first is that it allows me to cut out quite a sizable portion of plastic, which is a weight save and all that kind of thing. Um, but also it means that it rather simplifies the lighting circuit. Beforehand, I'd have had to have put some additional lights on the boat deck um, to shine out through the skylights of these rooms. Now, what I should be able to do is I should be able to use the lights which illuminate the room will also actually illuminate the skylights, which will make things a wee bit easier. So that's the plan for today. Um, in order to do this, I will have to do a few other things as well. Um, scale decks on the boat deck, that kind of stuff. But anyway, we'll see how we get on. So without any further ado, let's crack on. Now, just as I did on a deck below, I'm going to open out these windows somewhat. Because as you can see, there's that little bit of side plastic, technical term. Um, but there's a little bit of side plastic, which means that when you view the window from a perpendicular angle, you actually only see into a bit of it, and that side plastic is in the way. Um, and it just doesn't look quite good enough for my for my um, standard, really. I would quite like to be able to see into the window as you should be. And I mean, you know, part of this is because the plastic's thick, and there's nothing I can really do about that, and there's nothing I really want to do about that either, because the thickness of the plastic gives the model its rigidity as well. Um, but you can see on this side, with the windows actually opened out a bit, and get this in focus they actually do look quite a lot better um, you get much more view through the windows you can see into the room from all angles with the possible exception of that one which i haven't quite filed down enough yet in comparison to the other side where the plastic is still very much blocking your view so i'll file those down and then they'll look a lot better and we'll be ready to paint this piece so i'm just test fitting my uh, scale decks uh, down onto the compass platform area, uh, and they fit on generally very well. The only problem is at the moment, this is white, because I've sprayed the sides white, as you can see. Um, and that's not really an issue, but what will happen is that all the rest of Scaled X um, has been put down on top of black. Um, and these are very, very, very thin. You can actually see the light sort of shining through them. They are wafer thin, so to speak. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint this area roughly in black before applying the scale decks. And that way we just make sure that the colour underneath this deck matches the rest of the decks so that there's no difference in the appearance of the scale decks throughout the model. So as I say, I am painting this roughly, um, just with a brush. I'm not bothering with masking off and spraying. Remember, this stuff will not actually be seen or at least not directly, it's really just there to make sure that the base colour underneath the scale decks matches with the rest of the decks. Um, you'll notice that I'm sort of just bordering up against the sides of this piece. That's because the very edges of this piece actually peep up above the scale decks, so they still need to remain white. Once the painting is done, I left it for a good 24 hours um, and then I came back and started to fit the scale decks so there was a little bit of trimming that was required just the sort of the tabs which had held the scale deck piece onto the main sprue um, but nothing major um, and then as before using Gorilla Glue uh, smearing that on with my finger and then uh, sticking the deck down I was a little bit liberal with the glue on this piece and I did have to scrape quite a lot off so um don't take this clip as this is the amount of glue you need to use. I was a wee bit too much.
So, <clears throat> what I need to do here is to get these frames onto this piece of plastic, as you can see. So I'm just going to cut a few out and then we'll go from there. Now, I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing this, but what I've found is to be the best, um, or at least the way I've had most success with, is to glue them, glue the frames onto the plastic, and then, lastly, cut them out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some glue on the end of my stick. And using some blue tack, hold the frame. So I've just put glue around the bottom of the frame to start with. That's enough to that's enough to get it seated. And now that's on place, I can use this frame to go around again, just adding to the glue. And I'm not too concerned about sort of glue around the outsides because that's going to get cut off anyway. That doesn't really matter. And ultimately, I'll then go around with scissors and cut that out. And in the end, you're left with something like this, which is one without wanting to sound like Blue Peter, one I made earlier. And that's now ready to go straight onto the model. Now, I've been having a bit of interior debate about this. Um, with almost all, in fact, with all other windows on the model so far, I've opted to use this sheet, which is one that you can download and print off yourself. And I've tended to do that because I felt that the um, the sort of the transparent colouring and the stained glass seemed to be better on this sheet than it did on this, which is the KA sheet. Um, I thought that the stained glass seems to be more in line with what I think the Titanic stained glass windows were like. Uh, and also just tended to be a little bit, just a little bit more colourful, a little bit more obvious, that's what it was trying to achieve. However, with these skylight windows, I've actually opted to use the KA ones instead. And the reason is just that the leading in the windows on this, this sheet, is just a little bit more pronounced. Um, and I think these windows are too small to really see any of the detail in the stained glass. So on these windows, my focus really was hopefully, people seeing the leading in the windows. And on these, the leading is still there and still visible, but it's just not quite as crisp as it is on the KA set. So for the first time on this model, I'm actually going to use the KA sheet rather than the printout at home sheet. And you can see I've already attached quite a few win uh, window frames onto the sheet, and we'll be progressing with that.
So I'm not going to show many of these because I have done these things before, but I'll show one. So what I'm doing, now that these have had plenty of time to dry, I'm cutting them out with what is an extremely sharp, fresh blade. <clears throat> the sharper blade's useful because it means you don't have to exert quite as much force to do the cutting, so you're not putting the part under as much stress. There we are. Lovely. So now that's separated out, get my trusty gluey stick. Dunk it in the glue. Line up my next piece. And just put a rim of glue around the edge like that. Get my trusty piece of blue tack. Pick up the window frame with the blue tack. As with the room directly beneath it, the forward-facing skylight for the reading and writing room isn't actually cut into the piece of plastic for this model. So what I did was I measured up um, as accurately as I could and then scored um, where this aperture needed to be. Um, I then used a relatively small drill to drill holes all along that aperture. Um, I used the photo etch parts just to make sure that I was um, making an appropriately sized space. Um, and then with a very, very sharp knife, I just sort of squared off all those holes that I'd made, um, and glued the photo etch part in place, and there's the finished result. Um, because the photo etch part gives you a bit of a frame, um, you have a little bit of room to work with on this. I've managed to drop a piece on the carpet, so I thought I'd show you how I try to pick them up. This is a piece of photo etch, so it's sort of brass coloured. So I use my flashlight on my phone. Bing pot. There it is. That actually took no time at all. Normally it takes a bit longer, but as you can see, the flashlight catches the light of the metal. Makes it a wee bit easier to find. So in the following series of clips, I'm just removing all of the excess detail that I don't need um, on most of the deck housings for the boat deck. Um, what I tend to do beforehand is I tend to sort of draw, um, put some ink on the stuff that I'm going to remove just as a sort of visual clue to make sure I'm removing the right stuff. Um, and then with a flat um, blade I have just gone and scraped off all of these different pieces. It's important to work slowly and please, 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 please do wear safety glasses when you do this. Um, I'm just working through all this various stuff. There's a few bits and pieces um, on the underside of this um, forward deck housing section that also needed to be removed as well.
And here we have a perfect illustration of what I was just talking about, really the safety glasses. Um, the blade snapped while under tension. Not very much tension, I admit, but um, it snapped. It was quite an old blade. Um, but this is why you absolutely must wear glasses, because when these blades go, they can really ping off with a lot of force. As you can see, I've made a start on cutting out these sections here. Uh, and what I've done is I've started with a really rough cut, just, you know, got the bulk of the material out of the way. And then we'll move on to the finer stuff in just a moment. You can see I've just started down there, going into this bay window here. And so we'll carry on with that. Not too worried about this paper, that's replaceable. Obviously the LEDs, as I've already said, replaceable. So, made quite a good start. Um, the other reason that this is actually quite useful is, uh, saving quite a good bit of weight by doing this, so that's another useful little part of this.
So as you can see, I've now cut out the second part of my scale decks for the boat deck. Here it is. Um, I'm not going to glue it down yet because I need to wait until I've cut out all of this section leading down to the reading and writing room and also the lounge. Because once these are cuts are done, that gives me a firm reference point and then I can actually position this exactly in the right place. Uh, there's a bit of wiggle room because, as you can see over here, there's a bit of overlap so I can do a bit of trimming if I need. But also, in the other direction, there's quite a lot of space where I can fit my expansion joint piece anyway. So I've probably got in total about ooh, almost 10 millimeters to play with, which should be more than enough. So here we go, you can see that I've now cut out the hole for all of the rooms with higher ceilings including reading and writing room there. I've added new LEDs and you can see that these come as they did before. They go over the top of the deck housing and in, but they're underneath the boat deck, actual deck itself. I'm now gonna run new lighting in the ceiling itself and that's where these LEDs will tap into. Uh, so, so far, so good. Um, the next step is to get scale decks on the boat deck. Um, then I need to paint this piece. Uh, then I can actually glue that in and start working properly on the LEDs and that sort of finishes off this area. Um, and that gives me another really good datum point for where things need to locate on the boat deck. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to show how I actually made the cut. Um, the reason for this is just because all the video I did was really low quality. It didn't really, you sort of, you got my head and you got my hand, but you didn't really get anything else. So there wasn't really much value in adding it. But what I thought I would do is just sort of give a brief overview of what I've done. So um, I have a sort of, it's, it's pretty much the same as a soldering iron. Um, just that the end, instead of being onto a soldering point, is just a very long rod, which gets very, very hot. Um, and that can cut through the polystyrene of this model quite happily. Um, so that's what I use to actually make the cut, and that is why the cut looks slightly almost melted, because that's exactly what it is. Um, now the LEDs that were inside the lounge, and also the surrounding deck housing LEDs, um, they all had to go because they were glued to the ceiling, and the ceiling is what got cut out. Um, so I've replaced them like for like um, after I've made the cut, um, and they will now be glued into the new ceiling of this room, which is at the appropriate height. Um, interestingly, I quite like these photos because you get quite an interesting view into the lounge and the reading and writing room. You get a view that I was not able to show you before because the ceiling was far too low. So there we are. It takes a bit of jiggery pokery to get it, but um, ultimately everything fits where it should quite nicely now. You can see that we've got all of these rooms and they're not overstepping the scale decks in any place. Take them off. We've got a nice hole beneath. Now, don't be too concerned at how awful it looks down there. Uh, I need to recoat with some wood panelling printouts. Um, and even though that looks quite coarse and rough, it's actually quite smooth. It's just because it's an amalgamation of two different types of plastics um, and a bit of glue that's all sort of been melted up together. So it looks a bit sort of chaotic, but in reality, it's actually quite smooth. Um, so when I do put this new level of wooden panelling on it, um, the finished effect will actually look quite nice.
So I spent a long time getting this piece in the right orientation. Um, and I haven't really shown it because there wasn't much to see. It was one of those jobs that I had to sort of get very up close to it. So there wasn't much point showing it because you just didn't see very much. But what I've, what I've done is I sort of started off by eye um, and then I put other parts of the ship which need to mate up against it in position as well just to make sure that they're all nice and happy as well. Um, and we're now at a point where I'm pretty confident I've got it about as spot on as I can get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it uh, and I'm going to be quite liberal with glue here. And the reason for that is if you look, there's very little supporting material either side of this piece. So this will actually end up being relatively structural, I reckon. Uh, so just it's one of those things I can't I can't quite describe it, but it's just everything is telling me that this needs to be glued quite aggressively. Otherwise, this deck might not be quite as rigid as I want it to be. So here we go. Good start. Spilling glue on my cutting board. And the last part in this video, I will be um, adding LEDs. So as you can see, I've already glued the LED strips in place with their sort of tinted film over the top of them. Um, I'm now just flushing the pads on these strips with solder, which makes the, um, the soldering process easier later on. Um, then I'll just wire them up appropriately and also wire up the deck lighting LEDs as well. There we are, testing. Remember, as I always say, important to test first before you do anything else. 
so that's what I'm doing there. Um, but everything seemed to work very nicely. Um, and there is the finished result. You can see that the skylights have the exact same colour light as the A deck rooms beneath them, which is really nice. Um, the rooms all align up very well, which is great because that was one of my concerns, making sure that the skylights were exactly on top of their corresponding windows beneath, and they do that. Um, there's a little bit of light bleed um, from where this piece joins onto the boat deck, but if I'm honest, I was kind of expecting that. Um, so the next little bit of work to do will be to um, just to sort of seal around the inside of that to prevent any light bleed coming out, um, and also just to sort of touch up the um, the internal decoration. So um, if I need to, possibly replacing the um, the paper. Uh, wooden panelling. I'm not convinced I will need to do that though, um, but I might need to touch up with a little bit of paint here and there just to see. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with how this has gone. Um, I think it's a big improvement to the model, both in terms of simplicity, um, but also it just, it just makes it look so much better. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Those are the first lights on the boat deck, so we are touch wood, not that far from the end now. Once again, I need to thank Laurent Finkel, um, as I did last week. Um, he put a tutorial on the Facebook group showing um, how he managed to achieve exactly the same thing, and I certainly took some inspiration from that, so thank you very much for that. So, um, if you've enjoyed this video, um, like and subscribe, normal stuff. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, pop them down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, remember, there is still a giveaway going on at the minute, so if you want to have a look at how you can get involved with that, go and look at my last video episode 40 um, and at the end of that I explain how you can enter um, you've got till the 31st to do so so um, hurry up that's 31st of October not much time remaining um, so anyway that's it for today bye for now